ready for our headliner tonight? Yeah. Woo oh, you're for such a treat. Oh my gosh, so she has a, 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 a set on, on Crave that just came out uh, to watch, and they, uh, they, they killed it at, at JFL last year, and uh, they just keep killing it everywhere. So um, folks, really, give a big, huge gay welcome to Al Bell! Toilet seats? 
Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm I'm working on my voice here and there. That's the thing. So hormones will change your body composition, but they won't change your voice. That's the one thing. Once you've been through a puberty with testosterone, your voice is what it is, and you have to train it out of your system, like repeatedly. You have to really practice it. And there's part of me that's just resigned to the fact that fuck it. Why don't I just embrace how I sound and just let the chips fall where they may? You know what I mean? And part of me wants to work on it. Part of me obviously wants to pass and to fit in. But like, why hold myself to such standards if, if they're just gonna make me feel shitty about myself sometimes, you know what I mean? Especially when the practice itself is a bit humiliating, I'm not gonna lie. Because I grew up a bro -y guy, and the only time that I can find practicing my voice is when I'm like playing Nintendo by myself, like, <laughs> I'm Princess Peach! <laughs> Individually to people, you have to come out to everybody privately first before you go public. Of course, you have to come out to the people that you care about and that love you. And you become this connoisseur of experiences. I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir a lot here, but like you realize whose responses you prefer. There's sometimes an archetype between responses. And my favorite ones were the ones where people just normalized it right away, where they're like, this doesn't change anything between you and I. I still love you all the same. Let's go get lunch. Who cares? I love that. I always did. And I also realized something about semantics versus intent. Sometimes you have to make a compromise. Some people won't say the things that you want to hear, but if the intent is still good, then you gotta give them a little bit of grace. You know what I mean? And my best friend is a great example of that. Came out to my bro -y best friend, he, and he said all the right things, and came just short at the end. He was like, hey, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. I think that's so cool. I'm sorry if I ever made you feel uncomfortable. I just think the journey that you're on is so empowering, and I'm so proud of you that you have the rest of your life. Everything that you're doing is so cool. You're the man. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> got so close, man. He get, it, like, if I, and I had, to, I had to put it to him in a way that he kind of understood in a bro way where I was like, dude, you had the football for 99 yards and then spiked it at the one yard line and was like, suck my dick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I didn't like that last part either. Was that too hetero as well? I'm starting to try to read you guys. That's good. You're tough but fair. That's the thing. I think there's a bit of pressure. I, 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 I need to I need to kill. I need to keep being funny because you guys don't realize the stakes are higher than this between you and I tonight. The stakes are beyond this room. It's societal. Because if I go from being a funny dude to an unfunny woman, you know how many incels I've proven right in one of those room? This shit matters. I gotta win every time. But, yes, I do. Well, thanks for giving me a complex. Thank you for confirming that. Yes, so keep it up, bitch. <laughs> you're, you're falling. You're sliding a little bit. <laughs> but that's the thing. Those same people, I don't know if this is even funny or if it's just an observation, but those people will rationalize it any which way. You know what I mean? If I'm not funny, they'll be like, yeah, well, uh, it's because she used to be a dude and now she's a chick. But if I'm hilarious, they'll be like, yeah, one of us, dude. <laughs> yeah, I thought so, too. You guys are tough but fair. See, this is what I like about you. you have a, I don't know if you're waiting on karaoke, you have a quota on laughs. Cap <laughs> on Haas. You're like a French king. You're like, ha ha. Mm. <laughs> Next joke, peasant. <laughs> but like I'm also trying to I feel like I can relate so much to the female experience in little bite-sized pieces I'm starting to learn uh, going from one kind of polar end of the spectrum to the other I'm starting to really uh, to learn what it is to be a woman sometimes how people interact with you differently like I got okay so I'm worried that I want, that I put too much of my self-worth into superficial qualities. And I think maybe this is just a universal generational thing, that we're all just 
we all want to be beautiful, right? And we all put our uh, so much self-esteem into how many likes we get and how how gorgeous we are, and that's not fair. But it does give me a complex sometimes, especially when I wonder if I'm a butterface. And if you don't know what a butterface is, <laughs> if you don't know what a butterface is, or if you've just been staring at my uh, my tuck this whole time, like, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Those pants are tight, but I believe in you. <laughs> If you don't know what a butterface is, it's an ancient biblical term. <laughs> From Jesus himself. It's in the scriptures. I swear to God, if you look at it, it's Easter weekend, so read up on your Bible, you guys. <laughs> He's like, yay, and her face was, her body was tight, yay. But her face, you know. <laughs> A reading from the book of John 69, 24-7. <laughs> Welcome to Jackasters, man. We have fun here, dude. <laughs> so don't worry that I'm a butterface. And uh, I'll, I'll explain. There was a specific situation that happened last summer that I've been ruminating on ever since. So I was walking home. And uh, it was it was in the middle of the night. It was midnight. It was in the summertime. I had a cute little skirt on. I was feeling pretty good. I'm walking home alone. The streets are empty. And I hear this guy cat call me from behind. He's on a bike and he's approaching. And I hear him call me out. He's like, "Hey, what's going on, pretty pretty girl? What's happening, baby? You look pretty cute in that skirt. I like what you got on. You got some nice legs, girl. Stick around. And talk to me for a while. And call me a shitty feminist. But I'm new to this. And it felt really nice. It felt so nice." <laughs> I was like, I shaved my knees. He noticed. <laughs> I got jobs. <laughs> and that's so, and that's the thing. Like in that instance, just to have a quick aside. Like I'm in this phase right now. I've only been doing this a year. I'm in this phase where, like, admittedly, morbidly, uh, some of these validating, uh, some of these problematic, the way some people treat women is like validating to me. So like, every time I get interrupted by my guy friends, I'm like, yeah, interrupt me again. Yes. <laughs> I just hang around at Home Depot just to be like, what is this? Someone explain. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> 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 so I was really excited to get this cat call going on, you know? And, and it was a novel experience. So as soon as he pulled up perpendicular to me, I looked over and I was enthusiastic. I was appreciative, so I went, thanks! And I shrieked it at him like that. I couldn't help myself. I sounded like Seinfeld. I was like, this guy, he loves my smooth face. This guy's driving around town. He sees me. He wants to fuck. Is there a basket on the front of your bike? I could hop in. You can take me home. We can fuck. He likes my smooth face. That's fuck. <laughs> and so, upon seeing my face and hearing that shrill, awful voice, this guy had what I can only describe as a complete mental malfunction. He just <laughs> compute what just happened and he rode off into the night like almost wordlessly he just he was like and he got louder as he wiped off it, just, it was reverberating off the walls mocking me just, the effect that I have on men fucking nightmare It was so, it was humiliating to have something so validating like that and just ripped away in the blink of an eye. Something that was so, that was so cool to me and just to have it thrown back in my face, it sucked. And it took me a while to recover from that. But I think I've come out on top for two reasons. This is why I think it's actually kind of hilarious. Number one, that guy is never catcalling anybody ever again. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm traumatized about that shit. So I'm kind of like the best feminist, you know what I mean? Check it out, ladies. This is the face out there protecting you on the street. You don't miss, motherfucker. I dare you. You don't miss. Uh, 
<laughs> and secondly, I love the idea that I've become like the villain in this straight dude's horror story. You know what I mean? Like he's gonna gather his friends around a campfire someday and be like, legend has it that in the dark of night, there roams this raven head succubus woman with the smoothest knees you've ever seen. <laughs> And if you get too close, you look her in the face. Oh, look, 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 you're gay! <laughs> but only from the front, kind of. You'd still hit it from the back. It's weird. You have a fetch for Seinfeld for some reason. Every time you hear that bass come in, you're like, what's going on? You guys are fun, this is great. I want to be up here forever, but I know some of you are itching to sing. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I came, so I've already explained, like I came out to my best friend. I, you know, the one, the one experience, the one coming out experience that really struck me was when I came out to my niece and nephew. It really taught me something about myself because that was the most, it was the most unique one. My niece and nephew are four and six years old and they made me realize in a way, just how kind of selfish I am and how desperately I also still need validation, you know what I mean? Because they came around so quickly that it was bewildering and infuriating to me. I wanted that moment to be so precious, you know? And it wasn't. So like my sister and I, her kids, they're four and six, like I said, we were, we agonized over it for months. We kept procrastinating. We were like, how are we gonna do it? How are we gonna break it to them? How are we gonna say it? Kept delaying it, the stakes got higher, the pressure got higher, and then finally it just broke. We were like, what are we doing? Let's just do it. Let's just FaceTime them and see what they say. So we do, and in that moment, uh, they both kind of look into the phone and they see me and they're like, why does, why does Uncle Aggie look like that? And my sister, to her credit, was like, well, some people feel different in their bodies. Some people make some changes to be a little bit more happy, to express themselves a little you know what, it doesn't matter. Uncle Aggie is no Uncle Aggie anymore, but we still love her all the same. And they're like, okay, I drew a picture of a dolphin yesterday. <laughs> and in that moment I was like, hey, fuck your dolphin, fuck your dolphin. No, let's get back to me, I got job. I spent so much time on my hair and makeup. Contour, it's a shit dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought about it afterwards, and I was like, of course, kids that age, they're gonna come around so quickly. Their universes, their intellectual universes are, are building and collapsing every single day. Like the breadth of all the stuff that they're learning, they're little sponges, they're absorbing, they're absorbing so much. And comparatively, the adult big concept shit like gender means nothing to them when the crazy shit that they're learning is just so for, is so much more interesting. So to somebody like my nephew to be like, yeah, yeah, uh, Uncle Aggie is, is transitioning to a woman. Um, I found out what a T-Rex was yesterday! <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a fuck about Uncle Aggie? Come back to me when Uncle Aggie's a fucking T-Rex! <laughs> <laughs> But that wasn't kind of cool to like bust through the door and be like, hey guys! <laughs> give me a hug! I mean, I can't give Uncle Laggy a hug! Where are you going? Tuck check, we're good. <laughs> Fucking Tuckasaurus Rex is over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's, it's been good. You guys, <laughs> uh, you guys are cool. I'll do one more thing and then get out of here. Um, I'm excited that summer is coming. I think, first of all, I think that um, we've all become, it's interesting that we've all become uh, so in touch with our emotions. This whole lockdown thing, we all kind of became connoisseurs sommeliers of depression where we were, we were like is this the lockdown type or the standard is this seasonal perhaps <laughs> everybody's depressed for different reasons they're like yes the sun went away early today mm. no, no. Uh, <laughs> but that's 
the thing. I want. I I try not to self-diagnose too much, but I do think I have some semblance of seasonal depression just because of the the after effects, the slingshot effect, and just how much more happy I become when the weather starts to change. I love that shit. And every and the early signs of I'm still doing Seinfeld voice. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> right there, oh, when the weather starts to change, you know, it's like fucking built into me now. Um, so I I start to feel way better when the weather starts to change. And first sign that summer is on its way. First sign that starts to make me feel good are bike cops. You see these cutie pies rolling around out there with their cute little helmets and ring ring justice. Oh, oh, oh. of your nemesis is stairs, you know what I mean? Fucking <laughs> 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 Oh no! <laughs> but my cops in Toronto, they take their jobs way too seriously, man. And so I think they overcompensate for the fact that they're just such little fucking cute, cute patoots that they like try to be so macho about it, these guys. I saw a bike cop see something he didn't like in the park and dismount off his bike at top speed. He was just like, ha! Ah! He was really against the fucking tree. I was like, dude, you mean that thing? That's your cruiser! That's your cruiser! <laughs> That's, how are you going to take the perk back to the station without that thing? Which, how do they take the perk back to the station with it anyways? You ever think about that? Do they cuff the guy around the waist? They just hug each other like this? Or does he sit him in a basket in the front and he's like, I've been a very bad criminal. I'm going to jail. You guys saw that was it. There. there was an element of danger there. You saw me almost give out. Don't say I don't sacrifice for my craft. But that's the thing. That cop who like dismounted off his bike like that. I wonder if that cop has to be the most rogue. He's got it. He doesn't do anything by the book. He's the guy, he's the rebel in the fucking office who always gets reprimanded. I guarantee that day, the chief opened the door to his office. He was like, Malloy, get the fuck in here. I gotta talk to you real quick. Malloy comes in, the chief is leaning against his Mandy's bistro sign at the back of his office. Just like, God damn it, Malloy. You're too hot headed out there. You broke a kid's fingers in your spokes. What are you doing? I gotta cool you off. I'm always like, you can't cool me off. Cheap bike cotton's in my blood. <laughs> like my grandpappy and his grandpappy before him. Busting crimes on the streets with the old bikes with the giant wheel with the front of the room. <laughs> That's how far back it goes, Chief, you can't slow me down. She's like, no. She's like, no, no, boy. I've had enough of this shit. You leave me no choice. I hate to do this, but it's gotta be done. Give me a badge in your short shorts. <laughs> Malloy's like, whoa, 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 Chief, you stop right there. <laughs> you want to take my shorts? That ain't right. My shorts are the only have on the left. You want to know something, Chief? You think because you're the only one left at the top, they always right? Well, you have a stuff to think that maybe you last touch with people like me? The last one's left on the streets fighting for what's right? No, Chief, all you know is right and left. You stop by the break and you see if there's any pocket left in the pot. So you want to take my shorts? You want to ask me to leave? I let this bureaucracy a long time ago.